Hey there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. Uh, this is uh, January, February 2019. Uh, I had the Director of Architecture and Construction for Latin America and uh, the Caribbean for Hilton Hotels. Uh, anyway, uh, Todd was a... Uh, Todd? was an awesome dude and uh we appreciated him uh uh gracing the cover this issue was uh 196 pages oh boy it was a healthy one uh we went digital august of 20, 2021 that was our last issue we had white castle vp of construction on the uh, cover and uh we're 100 percent digital now but it's always so nice to hold the magazine on the cover let's take a look and see what my picture oh it's a killer picture this is me on uh in biloxi mississippi at our uh we rented uh, the steamship or whatever, and uh, we took pictures of everybody driving the ship and, uh, you know, in the intercoastal. So that was a really cool event. Uh, at, we did it at the Golden Nugget, and uh, we had a lot of people down there in uh, 2019. And a lot of people had never been to Biloxi. So, uh, you know, they came down and saw it. And then uh, what was funny is on the way back, the whole plane was like, was everybody from my event. I should have just chartered the, the jet, you know, but it was, it was crazy. But uh, Biloxi was a really good time. Uh, anyway, hope everybody's having a great week. Uh, it's uh, Thursday. Uh, the weekend is uh, coming upon us and uh, a little overcast here in Atlanta, but uh, can't complain. Uh, there's still the humidity is really hasn't hit us here yet, uh, but it's coming. I, I'll give it about another week or two and then it's going to hit me like a two by four and uh, it's going to be here until uh, September and then it kind of cools down here. Uh, but uh, all in all, uh, you know, it's 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 the finals. NBA, 2-1. Denver won last night, uh, so they're up 2-1. And uh, you got the Stanley Cup tonight. Vegas up 2-0. They're going down to you know, Florida to play the Panthers, and it's do or die for the Panthers. They don't win this game. Uh, it, it could be all over. So uh, enjoy the game tonight. And if you're a Puck fan, and uh, enjoy the Frozen Pond. And uh, I know I'll be watching it. And uh, may the best team win. I just want it to be a close game. So I can enjoy it. So I can scream at the TV. And my wife's like, you know, they can't hear you. I'm like, I know, I know. So this morning, I have two guests out of Virginia. Uh, they're with Rosen and Electric. And uh, I've got Bruce Jr., Claude Felter. Uh, he's the uh, VP of uh, Operations at uh, Rosen. And then on his right uh, is Bruce Sr., uh, who was a uh, superintendent there who just it, is just enjoying retirement, but is going to join us on this uh, call because he probably has some insight that we'd all like to hear. So, gentlemen, say hello to our audience out there on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Bruce, go ahead. Hello, Jun hello uh, Bruce. Bruce Jr. here. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Glad to be here today. Bruce Sr., say hello. Uh, Bruce Clarkfelder Sr. here. Good morning, everyone. Glad to be here. Yeah, we listen. We 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 thank you getting up early in the morning and uh, you know uh, starting the day off on a positive note. We'll have we'll have some fun. We'll cut some jokes and and all that good stuff. So, gentlemen, this is the how we're going to work this. It, we do our we do our episodes or our, our interview in three parts. Uh, you're going to kind of just tell us your story. Uh, you know where you guys grew up, how you got in. You know, got into construction. If you went to school, you got any kids and all that stuff. And then we'll go into the the roller coaster over the last three years. Any lessons learned that you know our listeners might be uh, in, you know want to hear and uh, uh, find it interesting to their uh, fancy. And then uh, we'll finish off with one positive thought or phrase from each of you and your contact info. And then uh, we'll close it out. So with that said, tell us your story. Either one of you can start. Let's go with Bruce Senior because without you, Bruce Junior won't be sitting there. So that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. So I've been in this metro, DC metro area all my life. Um, came out of high school, working at a gas station, became manager of that right away. Decided that wasn't for me. Um, started contracting carpet, and that wasn't for me either. But I got exposed to the construction industry while I was doing that and, and uh, heard that Local 26 was hiring on. So I came on board with Local 26 as an R worker, residential worker for a couple of years, joined the apprenticeship, went through the apprenticeship program, came out of my apprenticeship, went to work for a contractor, 
good contractor, worked with them for 34 plus years. Oh, wow. And then I came over to Roseden four years ago, um, a little over four years ago as an area superintendent and uh, retired six weeks ago. Well, congratulations on your uh, on your retirement. And uh, I have a question. Did they wear knee pads back then when you when you when you did your flooring gig or did not? They did. I and mean, that's why I got out of it. It was too hard, too hard. Wore the knees out, wore the back out. And it was oh, yeah. It yeah. Kind of boring for me. You know, listen, I was a hockey player, wore shin guards and stuff. But I'm telling you, I've done I, I did installs. My wife's an interior designer, so I help out here and there. And anyway, I come from a construction family. Uh, we're demolition and recycling, but uh, I've done plenty of floors over my time. And I'm telling you, I don't care how padded those knees are. It, they that the floors just eat you up. It is tough. <laughs> You're so right. I, I give anybody that's a flooring installer, I give them, you know, I give them kudos. And I've had both my ACLs done. So it's not easy sitting on my, free, you know, my kneecaps as it is. Uh, but, that, you know, so I was just curious if they, you know, had it, you know, because things have changed, you know, tools change. And but knee pads a must if you're turning it, if you're installing floors, man. Woof. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Jr., what's your story? Uh, so for me, uh, obviously growing up, uh, my father here was in the trade uh, as I was growing up. Uh, actually started when I was 15 years old as a summer helper. Uh, it felt like it was a great way to to make some money over the summertime. I mean, I was making more than minimum, quite a bit more than minimum wage back in the day at the time. I was working 40 hours a week. Uh, I didn't actually have to work during the school year. That was like the benefit to me, you know, of it because I just made enough over the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so went through that, I guess, again, for me, just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do 100% after high school and things like that. Um, actually went in and joined the military, was in the Marines for four and a half years. Oh, thank you for your sem your service, Semper Fi. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I had a, uh, my final station. I was stationed out in California uh, right before I got out and stayed out there for a little bit. Um didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, even getting out in that stage of my life. Uh, my girlfriend, who's my wife now, um, was actually going to school there. Her swim coach, uh, husband, actually was in the electrical trade, introduced me to, or gave me an opportunity. So I kind of, oh, this is familiar and kind of went back into it. I always kind of enjoyed it. And, uh, anyways, uh, stayed out there, like I said, for a year and a half, moved back here to the East Coast. Uh, actually got in touch with my father then before I'd actually moved back and actually went to work for the contractor that he was with at the time, um, was with them for about 10 years uh, before I actually um, kind of got situated uh, with a, quaint, uh, a former boss that was here at Rosenin at the time and kind of came over to work for Rosenin and have been here for just over 10 years now. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at sitting here today. Yeah. Y you know, I always tell people, if you have children and they don't know what they want to do, go into the military. You get a roof over your head, you get three square meals a day, you learn leadership, you learn a task, you put your time in, you can stay in, but if you you do your time, you get out, you, you can be a productive person in society, you know a trade, whatever they, you know, we're teaching you. My, my son went to trade school, he went to FAA mechanic school. And uh, he's working for Boeing now. He's on the flight ops down in Charleston, working on the 787 platform. And, uh, uh, you know, first he wanted to, he always wanted to work with his hands, you know, but I told him about the military. I'm like, look, if you got nothing going on, listen, you're going to go take this two year program at the trade school and then get your A&P license, which will take you about a year to take the five tests to get certified. But if you really don't want to do that, go into the military, go into the National Guard, do your one weekend a month, whatever it might be. They'll, they'll, the, the military will pay for your school, uh, but you're going to learn something. And uh, he teetered with it. I come from a military family, so I appreciate the military thing. Uh, my grandfather was a combat engineer underneath Patton in World War II. So he rebuilt all of the bridges uh, that the allies bombed during, uh, the war and basically helped rebuild Europe after, you know, after the war was over, but in our scrapyard outside of Philadelphia, I was from Pottstown about 15 minutes, uh, West of Valley Forge. Uh, I have these old super eight, uh, millimeter films, uh, that after World War II, they brought back all the tanks and armored personnel carriers and stuff. And we were, you know, cutting it up in, uh, you know, little pieces. And then, you know, they would, you know, take it. And uh, so we were into sustainability before sustainability was even a freaking word. 
excuse my French. And uh, but the other thing is I really appreciate I was always down at the scrapyard playing on the cranes when I was growing up and all that stuff. Just like so did you you went on some job sites with your father, I'm sure, right? Oh yeah. So same thing with me. And this I just had this conversation the other day on one of my previous podcasts that uh all the grandsons in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, I should say, you get your license at six, 16. So when you got your license, that was your time to say, okay, now it's time to get up at five o'clock in the morning and be in the scrapyard because every summer I had to work, you know, work. And uh, so, uh, you know, I can appreciate that, uh, you know, making the money during the summer and then going, going back to school, you know, and uh, they get just about ready, you know, when you run out of money, boom, it's summertime again, the next thing, you know, and you put, put it in and uh, shoot 350 bucks a week to me when I was 16, I was, I was golden. You know, yeah. I'm sure you were the same way on payday. It was like, yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't miss is taking the, you know, the showers to get rid of all the lead to keep the OSHA guys happy. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, you know, there were some fun times. I've said, I, you know, I still have my erector set, you know, and my metal case. And, you know, uh, it's funny. I look back at all the things I did, you know, but I, I'm actually, you know, I'm still in construction. You know, this magazine. I build it every month. I used to do it with paper and ink and all that stuff. Now I just do it digitally, but it's like doing a retail store or, or, or a facility. I build these things every month. And uh, when people say, Hey, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I built that, you know? And uh, anyway, Oh, but I laid railroad tracks. I, I shoveled asbestos, knocked out. I was the water hose guy. Uh, I, I did everything. You just had, when you were in the scrapyard though, you had to watch out for the overhead crane guys. Cause they did not, they could care less about the grunts in the freaking, in the yard. You know, you just had to be very careful in there. So, uh, but totally appreciate, uh, you know, the, the, the military aspect as well as working young, uh, that you, you just can't take that. So, um, with that, let's talk about the last three years, you know, March 2020, cranes all over the place. I don't care what city you went to. Cranes were up, low unemployment, everything's booming. And all of a sudden, we get hit with a, something that we never, you know, they said a couple of weeks. Here we are, three years later, countries reopened up. We're, you know, we're coming out of it. But um, a lot of firms went through it differently. Uh, so talk about, you know, you know, as far as, you know, from the electrical side, because, you know, you got to be close together, you know, you know, yeah. you know, laying wire or, or cable or whatever it might be. Uh, talk about how you guys weathered the storm, uh, you know, you know, from, you know, the electrician side and, you know, doing projects and, you know, what you learned uh, that you didn't, that you didn't know before. Um, so I think for, for me, uh, things that we learned a little bit uh, through this time was that, um because you're not you're an operations guy so you want to make sure that everybody everybody's run, run, running smooth it doesn't matter if it's the front end or the back end of the train everything's running smoothly at from an you know an operations point mm -hmm. so you come across uh the just the day-to-day -day task because of maybe certain uh protocols or whatever else that that everybody's wanting to conform to and uh and and pra practice uh the safe measures so you you work through that uh, not as trying there. Uh, the bigger impact I feel like that we had was just when it came from uh, procurement, because everything that we do in the electrical industry, you know, we're, we're kind of the follow trade. And, and mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we get on the job early uh, at the beginning and we're normally one of the last ones off the job. Uh, and then you rely on so many of the other supply chains uh, to just get you what you need. And when they have hiccups, so we did experience uh, some things that maybe get pushed out. We experienced some slowdowns. Um, it was, you know, how do you react to those? And as you're trying, a lot of people are remote at the time. I'd say the one good thing I, that did come out of this uh, was that we actually found through meetings like we're even just having one now, um, the use of technology to actually maintain a lot of that communication where beforehand you may have been looking to actually go in person on site. So uh, that's been a pretty good positive thing for me that's come out of this, um, that's helped navigate through this to maintain that open communication throughout um, and stress it maybe even more than we did before. The roller coaster started and your people were all coming into the office, I presume, correct? 
Uh, so no, when it, when it actually started, um, for me, it was kind of peaceful here in the office. So we did have some people here in the office, but mm -hmm. we had a lot of people that were starting to work more remotely. Um, so they didn't have to necessarily be in here in person. So for me, in some ways, it was kind of nice because it wasn't as congested. I could easily find a parking spot every day. I didn't have to worry about some of that stuff. So, um, but yeah, we have every, it was business almost as usual. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Bruce Senior, what's your take on, uh, you know, how things went, you know, over as we've come out of this thing? I think overall, uh, it was understanding that everybody was affected by it. their supply chain, uh, the, the delivery drivers, uh, everybody, the you know, restaurant, everybody was affected by this thing that was going on. The people on the jobs, their families, understanding the families have people, you know, they're at home. There's things that are going on. Understanding that the planning needs to be a little more detailed uh, on how you get things done, maybe, um, and keep the workers safe. Um, plan far enough in advance to where you can get the things you need in the time that you need to get them, understanding that the, the delays you're going to have, the delays we were having. And I think... One of the biggest things that I took away from it is understanding that there's people outside of your immediate window that are being affected by this thing and understand how they're being affected. Your workers that you have on your job, the people that you, you, you know, that you have working underneath you, understanding that, you know, they may be affected or not going to be there 40 hours a week or something may be happening. So it's a realignment of, to me, of just how you, take the big picture and understand what's going on throughout the whole country industry with everyone, not just, a, a, a you know, this tunnel that you're in, that you're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, talk about, you know, you know, the unions. I mean, when, when, uh, uh, when all the protocols came in to, to play with, uh, you know, being safe on the site and, uh, you know, having the hand sanitizers or maybe there was, you know, depending on what state you were in really determined your project. You know, in my opinion, uh, you know, if you were doing a, if you were doing an, an outdoor job, let's say, uh, you know, a highway job for the for the, you know, the government, you were outside, it probably wasn't a bigger issue. But if you were, you know, electrician or plumber, where you're close together, and you know, they had the, all of these regulations that they came up with, did they put any other initiatives in there or protocols that needed to be done other than what was the, you know, the local municipalities were saying, hey, if you do a job, you got to have this on there and so forth. Um, to the best of my knowledge, you know, what it, what they would go through and do is that they would actually sit there and it was basically following the, the, whether the state or the local, um, government's, uh, protocol, whatever they put into place. Um, what they did do was, is that they were trying to make sure that maybe there was a backstop, you know, whether it was through some of the healthcare stuff, I think some of the, the financial aid stuff, because, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, work did slow it kept going on but it did slow down um so mm -hmm. there were definitely some people affected by that so i think they were they're more focused on how do we support i think some of the people from the financial aspect um and making sure that hey look they maybe have some means and method that they can pull from um to get assistance if need be talk about uh you know as you know as electrical installers or facility guys you know making sure that the pills will keep, you know, have power and stuff. Talk about some of the things that, you know, you know, a, a, an electrician has to do, you know, you know, on the jobs and stuff, but, you know, just for our own general, because there's people out there that have, you know, they have sons and daughters and I'm all about, you know, pushing trade and, you know, getting people to work with their hands. I want them to bring back shop class in the high school. I mean, my kid can drive a stick. He can change a tire, but I don't think a lot of his friends can, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a shame. And, uh, we, you know, we need people out there to keep this uh, engine rolling. And, uh, you know, just like Bruce Sr., you know, look, he, he's just he's just retired. He's earned his keep. But there's someone right there. We've got to replace that. But now you've replaced them, but we need a lot of other replacements. So um, talk about, you know, uh, you know, what goes on with, you know, when like, I mean, I've, I've installed cable and electrical wire. I just did my base before I sold my house. So uh with my wife my wife's an interior designer she's a contractor too and we're a federal contractor ag you know we do stuff but uh 
talk about, you know, all the different aspects of, you know, electrical in general. Oh, man, that's pretty broad, I guess. Um, so, uh, yes, just like you said, I mean, there's there's the pipe, there's the wire that goes into it. But even from the pipe wire standpoint, um, making sure that, you know, one, maybe they're, edu- you know, whoever's coming in is educated enough to understand, one, how to read the drawings, one, to know exactly what they need to be pulling or where they need to be running things. Um working through coordination with the other trades that goes on. Like we get a lot into now, I feel like this day and age, a lot more of the modeling that goes into place um, where you have a lot of, you know, kids that start out uh, in the trade, maybe as a journeyman wireman um, going through and later on they shift courses and they get into some of the, the, the uh, BIM department stuff where they're actually going through doing a lot more of the modeling um, that helps with the coordination with the other trades that's going on, whether you're talking mechanical um, some of your duck guys, uh, any any of that stuff that's going on, but uh, it 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 crosses all facets um, beyond just the pipe and wire that goes on. Um, I'm trying to think. It's <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would I, I would agree that you know people think that electrically you wire the light, you put the outlet in. It's so much deeper than that. For you to be able to wire the outlet, put the light in, you need to understand what all the other trades are doing. How the whole project's being built, how you interact with the carpenters, the concrete people, the roofers. You actually have to know the everybody else's trade to be able to do yours properly. And, and so it's not limited to just wiring a light, putting in a piece of pipe, uh, hooking up an outlet. It's it's more it's as much about that as it is understanding where the concrete's being poured, why it's being poured, understanding how the mill worker is going to build that wall, how you need to install your work and being able to plan that in advance. Because if you don't know what they're doing, it's going to be hard for you to do your job. So really as a good electrician, you need to be really well-rounded with all the trades and the aspects of how they do their work. Because you are a follow trade, but you need to plan ahead to be able to follow them. So it's not limited to just electrical work. So it's there's so many branches off the electrical industry. It's amazing. Well, yeah, you know, uh, I have a piece of land up on the lake and we just got our plans done. It's our empty nester house. And, uh, uh, you know, my wife and I, we're going to build it ourselves. And uh, uh, so she's like, I've never built a house. I've just, you know, I've done kitchens and baths and this. I'm like, hey, look, you've got just about... Most of the trades you already have in place, you have electricians, you've got plumbers, you've got millwork guys, you've got, you know, a carpenter, you, you've got all these guys. All we have to do is get a roofer, foundation person and, you know, oversee it. And uh, I, I'm sure we'll go make a little mistakes here and there. But uh, uh, I just said, look, you know, we can do this. That's why that's why I hire people. That's what a general contractor does. He's like the captain of the ship. He's got to have all the other people that that run the ship to, to to keep the thing going. You just go down with the ship if something goes wrong. You know, the last you're the last man on. But the uh, uh, so you know it was interesting that um, when we did our basement, uh, uh, you know, we put LED in. You know, we want to make it, we want to make it look cool so we could sell the, sell the house. And uh, uh, but you know, just the 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 uh, distance between each receptacle, you know, to code, yeah. you know, so you could build it and because uh, you got to get it inspected. It, uh, it you know, electrical, it, you know, you need power. Without it, you're going to be in the dark. I think the electrical is like the backbone of any facility. It really is. Uh, you know, the roof is important, keeps the water out, uh, you know, the sides, you know, but electrical, without electrical, you don't have, a, it's not going to be up and running. So I think electrical is probably one of the most important things. Plus, it's a, it's got a cost in there. If it's not installed correctly, it could be a fire hazard. It's all of those things. So Bruce Sr., I think that you're right on the money with, uh, if you go into a project, you really need to know all of those different facets. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a lacrosse guy. So as a coach... I just, uh, when I, especially if I'm, t- you know, coaching the summer, I'll, I'll coach the rec guys, you know, whether they're sixth graders or whatever. And I always tell the parents, I'm like, look, your kid's a great attackman. Okay. He, he has promise, but the bottom line is he should really learn how to use all the other, he, he should learn how to play goal. He should learn how to play a defensive with a defensive stick. He should learn because if he, if he has the talent that he does and he, maybe he goes to college to play, he might be an attackman when he goes there. But when he gets there, the coach might say, you know what, 
stick this deep pole in your hands because that's where you're going to play. So I will take a kid any day of the week that, that, that can play with all the sticks. And I've got my old sticks behind me, uh, you know, from my, from my college days and prep school days, but um, it's a, uh, it's crucial that you know all these other things because you're such more of an asset because if someone gets hurt, you might have to step up and, 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 and fill that slot. Or if you're on the, if you're on the site and you see something that's going wrong, speak up because you can say, Hey, you know, that doesn't look right. Hey, you're an electrician. What do you know? I know a lot because I, I, that's the way I was trained. Am I correct? Bruce senior on Absolutely. that assumption? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So did you, uh, you know, when, uh, when Bruce was coming up through the ranks, were you, uh, were, were you on him? Were you rough on him or were you easy? You know, cause I was really tough on my kid, you know, cause I used to tell my son, Hey, 20 years from now, you'll come back to me and you'll say, dad, you, you were so right when you were saying that. I know that I, you know, I, I didn't believe it when you were telling me, but 20 years when I look back, you were right. Well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I leaned on him a little bit. Of course, I let the leash out maybe a little bit further and leaned on him and, and pushed him in directions. You know, when he was when he was early twenties, he was very absorbent and, and very hard worker. Um, and, and he had a, you know he knew where he wanted to go. So I did lean on him and push him, you know, more than others possibly. And I didn't recognize it at the time. I've heard about it since, but <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, so yeah. Uh, I think I did lean on him because I knew what it was, how hard it would be later on, you know, and I, and I did see some people that didn't have the big picture and how he struggled when it was a, a tunnel vision and they only knew certain aspects of the, our business. So the more avenues, the more paths you can send someone down, the more they're going to learn. They may bump their head, they may stub their toe, but they're not going to forget that they bumped their head and stubbed their toe and they're going to recognize that moving forward. So yeah, I think I did. I th and I think, uh, well, I hope it helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Jr., what what, what, uh, what part, you know, not to get off subject, but what, I forgot to ask you, what part of, uh, what, what division were you in the, in, in the Marines? Where, you know, what did you do there? When you so, were yeah, I was, I was listening to you talk about your son. So, actually, I worked on helicopters. Uh, oh, wow. I actually got, well, I had kind of two billets there. So, I was avionics, actually, on uh, 46s and also got air crew as well. So kind of the air observer, air runner uh, guy up and flying around. So my job as a father to make sure that he has thick skin because once he flies the nest and he gets out there in the real world, that's where it's really, really vicious. Playing on a lacrosse field or a football field, whatever it is, it's not even that tough. You know, I mean, it's tough. But when you get out in the real world and you're on your own, that's where all that, uh, you know, training or just guidance or pushing them in the right direction or tell them, Hey, you know, you know, you know, better to be uh, early than late, you know, finish what you start, do your best. I don't care if it's cleaning the bathroom or, you know, whatever they tell you to do as you start out, you got to do it 110%. And um, uh, I had my son on my podcast about two months ago, telling his story. And he actually told me, I, I, I was, I was shocked because I thought I was going to hear it about 20 years from now, but he still, he told me, he said, Dad, I want you to know, I wouldn't have gotten hired at Boeing if you weren't hard on me the way you were. And uh, believe me, I was a pit bull, you know. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I, I I, just, you know, he was my only son, so I don't have another chance. And I screw up, you know, it's not like I had other kids that I could, yeah, I screwed up with this one, but I can, you know, I can make it up with this one. He was it. And, uh, uh, and, he, and he said that, and I was blown away. That he said, you know, Dad, thanks for being hard on me, you know. And my wife, my wife was hard on him too. I'm not, you know, she was, she was, a, she's a great mom, but I was definitely hard on him. And even when I coached, you know, people, you know, they have daddy ball where you, oh, my kid's gonna play and stuff. Believe me, he hated being on my team because he knew I was gonna be so hard on him, much harder than the other players. I wasn't gonna let anything go. And, uh, um, but it was, it was funny to hear, you know, four or five years after, you know childhood teenage you know and, and you know he came out and he actually said it thanks for being hard on me uh it was it was it, it was nice to hear you know uh because i knew sometimes i would be hard on him and i'd lay in bed at night and go god i was really hard on him and i'm like ah he'll get over it. you know he'll he'll move on you know it's just like losing a game you know you you move on you learn from it and uh but uh uh yeah helicopters that that's awesome you know and um 
Uh, why didn't you stay in? Just uh, uh so uh, personal reasons for just not staying in at the time. Um, it's there's always I want to say probably a lot of drama stuff that goes on within the military. Um, mm -hmm. I had an uncle that was in the Marines and um, it was fantastic, you know, uh, run of it that he had. He had a wife, but at the same time, I saw him miss uh, two children being born, uh, birthdays, things like that. And I wasn't married at the time, but I kind of came to terms. I was like, well, do I see myself getting married one day? And if I do, there's no point to me just staying in another four years. Because mm -hmm. um, if I'm staying another four years, I go, might as well go and stay at least to 20. And if I'm staying 20 years, I'm like, man, I, I don't know if I could put somebody else through that. And I don't know if I could go through it. So I'm, if I stay in, I'm not getting married. I, that was my own personal belief on it because it's, mm -hmm. it's hard on relationships uh, for a yeah. lot of military members. So um, I feel for those and, and it takes a strong partner on both sides to really make it work. Bruce, um, Bruce Senior, what were your thoughts when uh, he uh, joined the Marines? The few, the proud, the Marines. What were your thoughts when he went in? Uh, my thoughts was it was a great move. I yeah. Went, I thought, you know, see, see the world, you know, you know, see, get out of this little corner that you've been living in. See how everyone else lives. Uh, be exposed to different things. Adventurous. You know, learn something you know, different besides what you learned here, where you've been living for the last eighteen years. It's a. Uh, so I thought it was a great move on his part. Uh, he did it on his own. You know, I don't think he had a lot of people pushing him in that direction. So I was impressed by that. Uh, so I thought it was a great move. You know, I hate to see him go away, but I thought it was a great move for him to get out there in the world and see how the world is and experience different things. Where, where did you do your boot camp? Paris Island. Oh, you went to Paris Island. Yeah. What what time of year were you there? I was there in January. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, listen, it, you know, it, it can get a little chilly there, you know, but at least you didn't have to do it, you know, in the middle of summer and stuff, yeah. you know, because it can get really hot, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, uh you know, talk about a helicopter, you know, an electrical, but what you learned on the, on the, on the chopper yeah. coming into, you know, let's say you're building a, you know, a retail store or a hotel or whatever, you probably went in there and said, this is, this is, this is cake. I can totally do this because I was doing all this you know, wiring avionics, you know, on the choppers coming. Am I well, right? I, I think you, to some degree, yeah, you're right. Um, I think that the 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 reasons why things were easier for me, and I noticed this while I was in the military, and I see it now in the trades a lot. Um, to your point earlier, I think you know you have so many kids that are coming into trades or even military where they're working on stuff that really have never picked up tools before. Um, I grew up doing that, so I already knew when I went into the military, you hone that probably more just your ability to use a bunch of different tools, problem solve, things like that. And then specifically to electrical, um, electrical theory was a big part of everything. Um, so when I got out and I go into electrical field, it's um, I, yeah, as an electrician, when I had the background a little bit, I have somebody here I can lean on, which definitely helped. But the only part I had to really pick up now was kind of that code side of stuff. What's the, you know, local, the authority having jurisdiction? What are the things we have to do there? The National Electrical Code. So a big portion I probably had a good baseline on, not perfect, but a good baseline on. So now what I have to focus on is actually a little bit less. Um, What are some of the coolest projects that you've, uh, you know, cool? what's the coolest project you think either one of you have worked on over the years? That, you know, stands out as like, hey, that was a really cool thing. You know, if you ever went by it and said, hey, you know, I built that and stuff. What would it be? Would, what, would, what would it be? Uh, I think for me, it would have been uh, Amtrak Auto Train. And, you know, they operate seven days a week, 24 hours a day, a train's coming or a train's leaving. And we completely redid the main facility, new building, uh, new station, new maintenance building relocated all the tracks. It was a very interesting project. Uh, and it, because of, they were never closed down, they were always operational. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and uh, that's one that I introduced my son on as summer help. So that's one of the, probably my nicest projects. When I go by it, I, can, I look at it and say, yeah, I did that one. Awesome. Yeah. Bruce, Jr., Bruce Jr., what about yourself? What was one of your favorite projects that you worked uh, on so far? I think one of the favorite projects I've actually worked on when I was, you know, kind of still in the field doing things, it was the, uh, I did a production studio 
And it was, I think earlier on to what my dad here was talking about, the aspects of knowing all the other trades and just the details that really go into when you start getting into a lot of these soundproofing rooms and you start getting into these different curved walls. And I, there are so many different systems that really go into, you know, really such a tight space that coordination has to go into it. Um, to me, that was really cool just because for me, and at least in this area, I don't feel like you see those type of things going on all the time. So to me, that was kind of that once in a lifetime job that most people I've talked to have never done anything close to that. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in, in the electrical world, uh, you know, for our listeners out there, commercial construction coffee talk, are there any, uh, you know, electrical seems like it, it doesn't really change that much. It, you know, it is what it is, but are there any cool things that are, you know, I mean, I remember when like LEDs came into play, you know, it was going to, you know, change, you know, they're low heat, long, long, you know, bulb life, you know, they, they've come a long way. What do you see coming down the pike that, you know, that could be really interesting, you know, because you're doing electrical every day that, you know, that our listeners might be, you know, find of interest? Um, I think for me, it is just seeing technology as a whole, how it's went and how that gets gets introduced into how we do the work, whether you're talking about tools from just a simple thing of tool tracking that kind of goes on Um, nowadays, like when it comes to the simple thing as a battery drill like just the amount of reliability, power, anything else you get out of that compared to the old cord and plug stuff um, to the way we're going through doing uh, modeling of so many different systems. Now those coordinations, the interaction that goes on back and forth, uh, it's, it's, I think, a lot more, um, I don't know, coordination, um, technology getting introduced to things that are helping us just streamline a lot of the processes uh, to get to the end final product. So some of these products, Projects that may have taken a year before now, hey, there's some upfront effort, but through coordination, now we're doing six months, three months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bruce Singer, what are your thoughts on any cool pro- products that are coming out to help the electrical sector? Um, I think overall, the, the, the lighting systems are coming up with now, the energy saving lighting systems, receptacles that switch you know, through the infrared of the sensor in the ceiling. Just technology that's going green, energy efficient buildings. Uh, I think that's constantly evolving on, on, and the ideas keep changing from year to year and not dramatically, but they keep tweaking systems to make them more efficient. So it's, it's always basically the same, but it's always changing too. So you gotta keep your eyes open. The no two lighting systems are the same. The outlets switch differently, uh, furniture set up differently. So I think, uh, Based on everyone being aware of the energy needs nowadays, the change in the way things are built. Listen, the rage right now is AI. AI is going to change construction. It's going to do all this stuff. Uh, you know, my take on it is, uh, you know, as, a, as you guys are tradesmen, that uh, you're still going to always going to have labor. It's it's going to be there. You know, can a robot pull a piece of, you know, cable through or what have you? Sure. But someone's got to build that robot. So, uh, but it, you know, it technology is the is the cart before the horse or after it. You know, I, you know, I, I'm I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it, it it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think it was yesterday I was doing a recording and I said, remember this date, two thousand uh, June six, two twenty twenty three. Five years from now, look back and when it's June six, twenty twenty eight, look and see what the you know, your, your sector, your industry looks like, and, uh, you know, it's still going to be there, but it'll be, you know, technologically advanced. There'll probably be some new things that come in, but it's going to be robust. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is that, uh, you know, you guys are, you guys build all sorts of facilities, but just like Amtrak, uh, I know that they've been doing a lot of work on, uh, you know, facilities and, you know, upgrading things, but, in in retail, if you're not building, you know, retailers aren't growing, you're not building stores, you know, you, you're just not making. That's just, the, that's just the nature of the beast, as well as, you know, every three to five years, they're going to refurbish, they're going to put new carpet, paint, you know, FF&E, whatever it might be, um, that as technology goes, I think, you know, it depends on, you know, which sector you're in, but it, it definitely can help improve the process, but you're still going to have to have that manual labor in there. Uh, and you think I'm wrong or right there, or what's your take there? I yeah. think it's right on. 
Yeah. Uh, are you guys getting an AI, AI, you know, on, on your side of things uh, or, or is it something you're, you're dabbling in or, or is it just kind of, Oh yeah, that AI thing, you know? I'd like to say it's probably, yeah, that AI, you, you hear about it a little bit, but it's, it's not at the forefront. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, uh, I, I love talking, it, it's awesome to have a father and son gig here, you know, because, uh, you know, as well as, you know, you got the military background, but it's so cool to see, you see, you know, the generation, but you both have the same mindset. You know, I got to get this done. I want to get it done on time, on budget. And I also want to make sure that the entire, you know, project, even though I'm on the electrical side, I want to make sure that the other sides of the of the project, the other disciplines, you know, plumbing, concrete foundation, whatever it might be, that that they all run smoothly. Because at the end, you were part of that building process. And, you know, without your input, things might not run run as smoothly as they as they as they should have and uh just by opening your mouth and 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 saying hey man i don't think that i don't think you're installing that right you know what do you know you're an electrician you know stay to your stuff no 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 no. you really you you should do it this way and uh so that that thing you know listen i learn something new every day i don't know everything the day that i stop learning is the day i should go do something else uh, i mean i you know, and today with te- with information and technology moving at warp speed, uh, I'm trying to, you know, consume as much, you know, data and information as I can. I mean, I'm after every day, I'm mentally drained. I mean, I got I got to catch some Z's. The only thing I can't do is when I go to bed, I got people from halfway across the world in China, Singapore or Australia sending me stuff, you know, and I just cleared out my email box. And by the time I wake up, you know, a couple hours later, if I'm lucky, I get, you know, three or four hours sleep, I wake up and boom, my email box is full of other stuff, you know. And uh, so it, uh, it, it I'm on the treadmill. I'm, I'm, I feel like, you know, it, you know, it, but. I know that if I can look myself in the in the mirror every night and like, look, I gave it my all. I, 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 you know, I did a great, good job. I'm going to wake up in the morning and tomorrow's another day and I'll just do it all over again and see if I can do a better job. So, uh, you know, always trying to improve and stuff. Um, the, uh, uh, if there was one positive thought or phrase that you would want to leave with our listeners out there in commercial construction coffee talk, uh, I'll start with Bruce Jr. First, uh, you know, what would it be? What would you want to leave, uh, you know, with them to, you know, plant that seed? Um, oh man, <laughs> I probably have a lot of things I'd like people to, to know, but, uh, I would sit there and say, you know, uh, don't, don't stand in place, be an advocate for yourself. Um, I think a lot of times too many of us sit around and, you know, we just wait for things to happen. Um, you gotta be out there. You gotta be present, be an advocate for yourself. Just don't wait for things to happen in life. Um, you, you, you have to push the ball forward. Bruce Singer. I, I would say, can't fail it. You haven't tried. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of failing. You know, a lot of people stand back because they're, they're concerned they're not going to make it. They're going to fail at it. But you can't fail if you don't try. So I would say, you know, push forward and understand there's going to be bumps in the road and it may not always work out. But you can't you can't stay stagnant. Yeah, uh, I am right there with you. I'm an advocate every day because I'm pushing skilled trades and. Uh, uh, I'm all, I always tell people, look, uh, you got to make mistakes to get better. I mean, uh, uh, like I said, you know, I'm, I like, uh, I'm an, I'm a coach. I played, played the hockey and lacrosse. So I have that sports background, but I always, I always, everything that I learned in sports, I, I apply to my business, you know, winning and losing practice is perfection. You will play it. You, you will play as you practice. If you don't practice right, you're not gonna, you're not gonna play right. And, uh, and then you might have put the game plan in that whole week and at halftime you got to scrap it because something happened or someone got hurt and you, you, you've got to be able to adapt. And uh, I, I don't like using the word pivot because everybody used it over the last three years. But I think being, uh, you know, uh, an advocate, don't stand in one place, you know, go and learn other things. Uh, but, you know, you got to try. And that's the most important. But you got to be positive. You got to stay positive. Positive is probably the most important thing. I mean, even if you're trying to get better, if you got, you know, you, you got, you know, you got the flu or you broke a leg or you, you, know, you had your knee replaced, uh, 
you you got to work at it to you know to get back to where you where you were and then even you know probably better than you were before and uh so i'm right there with you with both of that you know and uh once again hurrah you know to uh you know bruce jr there for uh you know you know sacrificing and uh you know keeping us all safe out there so um if if anybody wanted to get in touch with you guys about you know electrical or talk tradesmen or what have you how would they reach out to you uh for me b clock filter at rosenden.com is probably the best way to reach out okay and uh bruce senior you know you're retired but if you don't want to be by the retirement if someone wanted to reach out to you you know and talk uh tradesmen or what have you you've seen a lot uh how would they reach out to you uh you do reach me at yahoo bwc0313 at yahoo all right. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, listen, if anybody wants to reach out to me, uh, I'm at David C at CCR-mag.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, listen, send me anything. We're always looking for content and uh, it could be a charity event. It could be, you know, uh, an anniversary for your firm. It could be a new personal amount. It could be a case study. What have you? Uh, send it to me. We look at everything. We had uh, 29 million people hit our site last year. So we're trying to, you know, go over 30 million this year and, uh, you know, break that barrier. And uh, it's all about content. I post it. I send you the link. You share it. It's good for your SEO, which is search engine optimization. And uh, uh, it's a win-win. Uh, let me, let me just, uh, judge the book by its cover, but send it to me. I'll, I'll find a place for it. Very tough to get in the magazine, but we have all the social media channels and, you know, we post all day long and, uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you. And, um, uh, and look, it's, uh, it, it's content, you know, we gobble that stuff up, you know, I'm a data guy. I like, I look at like looking at all this stuff. Uh, so send it to me, let me judge it and I'll, I'll, I'll post it and, you know, we'll throw you the URL and you can share it and, you know, uh, you could be on the wild, wild web with 8 billion people out there looking at stuff. So, well, gentlemen, you know, I, I, I've i never had, you know, I've had a couple of times where I've had the father, but this is a really, really cool because we have a journeyman, tradesman, it's done all sorts of stuff. we got, you know, military, now electrician. Uh, it's uh, it's an amazing thing. It, you know, uh, any final thoughts, you know, before we, uh, end, you know, end this, you know, as far as, uh, well, let me ask you this. Are, are you uh, what what are your thoughts for the second half of 2023 as we go into q3 and q4 you know uh uh from an operations i'll start with bruce jr you know you know what what are your thoughts are you bearish are you bullish where are you um i really don't know i mean it's to me it's you know it, it's exciting times in front of us i think there's a tremendous amount of opportunities out there throughout the entire industry for everybody um, you know, just to me, it's going to take it one day at a time and keep moving forward and, and just looking forward to what the future I think is going to bring us. Bruce Singer? Oh, uh, I think it's, being retired, I think, uh, I think it's going to be interesting coming out of what we've been through the last three or four years and seeing, you know, how the market's changed and how it's being addressed, how it's being attacked moving forward in this third quarter, fourth quarter coming up. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah, you know, the, uh, I, I think the, you know, it, I don't get I don't get sucked in and all the uh, poo pooers and the doggy downers and, and all that stuff. I mean, I've, uh, you know, I'm going to be 60 at the end of this month. And the big six O staring me. So uh, when I look back, uh, you know, I went through, you know, the oil embargo in the seventies. I remember sitting, you know, sitting in line and, uh, you know, I, we would go get gas down at the uh, scrap yard, but uh, I remember, you know, it was odd, even depending on what your license plate was, when you could get gas, uh, you know, I, you know, went through a couple of, uh, you know, you had uh, the Iraqi war, then you had the dot com burst, then you had nine uh, 11. I could go down all this stuff you know, that, that I've seen. And it's been like this, you know, over the last 20 or 30 years. And, but I, you know, myself, I feel very, very positive about the second half of the year and, you know, moving forward. Uh, I, you know, would I, would I do, would I suggest some things be done differently? Absolutely. You know, just to, you know, for in general, uh, but, uh, moving forward, I just think that, uh, there's 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 so much going on that that 
it's very positive for a lot of people. And uh, that even though there might be, you know, something might happen, uh, uh, you know, you just have to kind of stay positive. That's my, my, put the blinders on, go, give it your all, stay positive and think that the sun's going to rise tomorrow. It might be cloudy, but it's still going to rise. And, uh, you, you know, we're going to, we're going to make it. And uh, just like over the last three years, um, I mean, I, I, I swear in April of 2020, I put my, my, my second issue out and I, there were some nights where I would get up my wife's, where are you going? I'm like, I got to think, you know? And uh, I just have to kind of think, you know, it was my business. I built my company and then I have had to go to print to face to face. And I had to make that decision and it was dicey, you know, now, you know, I don't even look back. I don't miss the post office. I don't miss the printer, you know, and all that stuff, but I'm still kind of doing the same thing. But, uh, you know, I had to make a decision. Someone had to make it. And, uh, and it's scary, you know, uh, you know, not holding a magazine anymore. You know, are people going to come back? And, uh, um, uh, but I learned about a lot about myself and I learned that there's more than work you, to life than just working. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that a lot of people found out over the over the last three years of this roller coaster. That's been a wild ride. You know, I mean, there's been some circles. There's been some, you know, you're going up the thing and then you're going down and then you're doing this. I mean, every day is crazy, on, on, you know, on this ride. But uh, in, in general, uh you know, it, it, it's just, uh, it's exciting. You know, I get up every day, man. I'm, I'm psyched to go and, you know, I, I, yeah, I'd probably do the uh, 90% of what I do probably every day is the same. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get my, right now I'm going to production. I do that every month. I'm getting production for my issue. I want to get it posted. I'm working on the other ones. I'm looking at future stuff. Um, but every day I get up and I'm like, Hey, I'm really psyched to get this done. Uh, being retired, I think I'm going to have to work my whole life. I just can't see myself hitting golf balls and catching fish on the bass boat. You know, I just, uh, I'm going to have to do something to keep myself busy. My wife knows it too. She, and my son's like, you're probably going to work till you know, you're down. I'm like, look, I can't just sit around and do nothing. I, I got to do something. So uh, you know, what's that? That's what, they, that's what they tell me all the time. You need to do something. Yeah. 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 Keep well, friend. I'm in the same, same mindset, you know, so, uh, I plan on rebooting and regrouping in the fall and doing something. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, we 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 need more digital guys out there. You know, go you know go go take a go take a boot camp and uh, get on the web and uh, uh, you know there's all sorts of stuff that you can do. And uh, uh, but I'm I'm with you. I mean, I'm gonna I'm I, I just can't I I'd get bored doing hitting balls. You know, I just I have to do something. You know, and be constructive and. Uh, uh, I mean, all, all my family, we all worked, uh, you know, we were, worked when we were young, they, they retired, they worked till they were older, you know, maybe they didn't go in every day. Uh, but you know, my cousins were fifth generation. Our company's been around since 1888, Mayor Pollock steel outside of Philly, but now my cousins are running it, you know, but way back when I was 16, we were all born in the same month of June, my two cousins, I, so they're running the company, but you know, we're, we're there. And, uh, it's nice to see that, you know, generations can come in. And uh, uh, maybe not all all your siblings will go into the you know same trade or business that you're in, but if you plant the seeds, they will come in and you can continue. And then they bring in the they bring a fresh outlook as well, you know, to kind of tweak things, but keep the engine going down the track. If you know what I mean, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, everybody out there in commercial construction coffee talk, listen. If you're having any issues with, you know, electrical on your projects or you, you saw this new product and you want to, you know, you want to talk to either one of these gentlemen, uh, reach out to them. You know, we email uh, and uh, hopefully they can help you. And, um, uh, you know, pleasure meeting you both. Uh, with that said, I want you to say goodbye from Virginia. I'll start with Bruce Jr. And once again, thank you for your service. Goodbye, and uh, thanks Thanks for having us on the show. Really appreciate it. Bruce Sr.? Yeah, goodbye. Hello. I had a great time. Uh, appreciate you guys having us here. Yeah. No, listen, we appreciate you getting up early and, uh, you know, doing the, doing the recording. And uh, listen, everybody out there, a couple things. If you're on a construction site, make sure you stay safe. We want you getting home at night, all right? And the heat's coming. So drink lots of water. Stay hydrated. I, being dehydrated is the worst. Headaches, blah, blah, blah. Just drink water. It, it's the best thing for you. 
And, uh, you know, like I said, being safe is the most important thing. We want to get, we want you to get home with your families. Uh, you know, my final thought, Hey, if you're out there, hit that like button. You're going to help us with the algorithms on YouTube and all that stuff. We want to get this out there. So these, uh, you know, these gentlemen's stories can get out there. So hit that like button. We really appreciate it. So with that said, I'm going to sign off from, uh, Sugar Hill, just below the Beaufort Dam, uh, Lake Lanier, all oh, about uh, 25, 30 miles north of uh, Atlanta. And uh, if I get up for Virginia, guys, I will give you guys a call. We'll have uh, some grub, you know, either breakfast or lunch or whatever. And I uh, look forward to meeting you in person. And I'm, there's no fist pumps here, man. I'm shaking your hand, okay? You and uh, uh, for all you out there in commercial construction coffee talk, we will see you next time on another episode. And uh, everybody, enjoy the weekend ahead. Stay cool. And uh, remember, drink that water. All right, gentlemen, Bruce Jr., Bruce Sr., I will see you later. All right. Thank you so much. I enjoyed the conversation. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.